music to be murdered by. But first, a word from our sponsor that is helping me through this financial nightmare of a situation called the coronavirus. <laughs> oh man, you guys are gonna love this one. Woo! Woo! Ha ha ha! Woo! Okay, look, look. Yeah. Let me tell you guys something about this thing right here. <laughs> So when you go out in public and try to use the internet You're subjected to hackers trying to jack your info Unless you use a VPN And that's what I'm here for Keep them from peeking in For a year or more So I made this video back in the hotel room in Iowa Use ExpressVPN to keep me safe in now Iowa Cause they changed my IP Made it look like I'm in Paris They're the top rated VPN provider So don't compare it Got that 24-7 customer support If your content is blocked They can unblock it for sure Like in the EU article 13 says You can't look at me So check the description Get to click and then come laugh with me Dog the point I want to make is this is an offer to take They got the fastest speeds of any VPN in the game So take a peek in the description I got something you should see Click the link it easily You'll get three months for free Woo! Now but seriously guys Please go download to the description down below And support ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video They are helping me a ton right now Specifically because the coronavirus Has shut down my main job Which was my main source of income So I'm really struggling at the moment So I'm trying to do my best over here on YouTube To support all of my lifestyle right now But VPNs do a lot But the main thing is they protect you guys from hackers i made this video in a hotel room in dubuque iowa at a day's in on an unprotected wi-fi server literally i was exposed to everybody but i downloaded express vpn and then i was completely hidden from all that crap didn't have to worry about any of that while researching for making this video so look at it this way okay life without a vpn is like mailing a postcard and everybody at the post office can see what you wrote a vpn just puts an envelope around it so they can't see it you literally just do exactly what i did you open it up you click whatever location you want they have a ton of different servers right here that can mask your IP address. You click which one you want, press connect, and then boom, you're hidden from everybody even the government. You can also get unrestricted internet access, so I know a lot of schools have like a security firewall on there. It goes right through that, okay? If YouTube is blocked at school, download a VPN and boom, you can watch YouTube at school. I don't recommend it unless it's for educational purposes. So just go download to the description. It is www.expressvpn.com forward slash crypt. Click that link. You get three months for free on this VPN, guys. It is definitely worth it. It is definitely worth protecting the thousands of dollars that could have potentially been stolen from me at the Days Inn in Dubuque, Iowa. But massive thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. You guys are awesome and let's get on into this video music to be murdered by before the music even begins, Eminem throws out a few hidden tidbits. The album itself is named after a collection of eerie music from director and producer Alfred Hitchcock, who normally specialized in the intense suspense category. The original album was designed by Alfred to be used during his suspenseful movies, more specifically during murder scenes, letting everyone know that the mood Eminem is creating for this album is murder. Also, one of the several variations of Eminem's album cover is a nod to the original album cover from none other than Alfred Hitchcock. Also, also, the artwork of this album is in cohorts with the title itself. The I in music is an upside down knife, the C is an axe and a pipe combined, and the E in B is a sideways pitchfork. There's also a nice throwback to the Slim Shady on the front with the stamp of a hockey mask, which was sported by Eminem during the height of his Slim Shady alter ego era. And one final thing about the cover art is the word murdered is made to look like it is pasted from magazine clippings, very similar to serial killers back in the day when they sent anonymous letters. All of this is tied together and synonymous with the word murder. The lead track from the album is called Premonition, which is defined as a strong feeling that something is about to happen, especially something unpleasant, which begins the continuity of this entire project horror-filled uneasy vibe. This track begins with the sound of Eminem stabbing and presumably killing a female and then digging the grave to bury her in. Essentially bringing forth the metaphor that we are about to listen to music that he just murdered someone to. Shortly after the killing, Eminem is heard having a conversation to which I have multiple theories. Theory 1. Em is talking to himself saying we will never see eye to eye as much as I hate you, I need you. This could be in reference to him saying that he's not a fan of who he's becoming now, but he knows there is still success there and he still needs this. Or, theory two, M is talking to the rap game in general, saying they will never see eye to eye considering M's many disses towards the new age genre of rap, and that as much as he hates it, he does need it because it constantly gives him new things to rap about, and in the end, it is still rap, which is where his success lives both of which can be counted as a win. At the end of this intro sequence, you can hear the actual voice from Alfred Hitchcock himself saying the name of the album, which is just dope in general. This hook is entirely slept on and underrated. I love it. 
This is just personal preference, but fuck you, I'm putting it in here. The opening line of this song is addressing the criticism received from Eminem's previous album, Kamikaze, which was filled with many songs dissing New Age rappers, as well as people who criticized the previous album, Revival. But, Eminem points out that he was simply rapping to prove his ability was still sharp, yet everyone was overlooking that. The phrase, chip on your shoulder, can be referred to as thinking that you are more than what you are giving credit for, and Eminem is simply refuting that, saying that so many people have already considered him the greatest rapper of all time, so how does he have a chip? M is basically just saying he's already given the credit as being the best, so it's impossible to think that you are better than the best, because you're already the best, and good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. Fuck! Okay, I have to take away a win for this punchline. I, I just have to. In this line, Eminem is basically stating that if he was doing rap only for the money that he could have quit a very, very long time ago, considering the millions amassed from his several platinum selling albums, thus ensuring that Eminem still loves rap as a craft, and that is the sole reason that he's still doing it, which is very noble in itself. This line is in reference to the length of time that these rappers have spent making music, yet Eminem feels as if nobody is telling them that they are too old for rap and have been around for too long. Jay-Z has 13 solo albums and has been rapping officially since, like, 1988, I think. Tech 9 has over 20 fucking albums. He's been doing it since 1991, has a song with Tupac. And 2 Chainz has been around since 1997 under a different rap name. All of these rappers are also in their 40s or 50s. And Eminem is just basically giving an example of how he is unfairly criticized for his age and longevity. Also, plus one for the Tech 9 shout out. Every album that Eminem has ever done has either gone gold or platinum, except his very first album when nobody even knew who he was. In fact, Eminem has 28 certified plaques. This line has many, many meanings. One meaning is that this is paying homage to LL Cool J, who is by far Eminem's heaviest influence in the rap game. Bigger and Deffer was LL's second studio album, acronymed as Bad, on the cover, which plays into the double entendre of M saying he still sells 4 million copies of a quote-unquote bad album. This also plays into another double entendre of M saying that he is now bigger in size and Deffer to the hate. Revival certainly was not received well by the public, so in response, Eminem surprised released Kamikaze the following year, which most definitely was received far better than Revival, and reminded most of the general public, do not piss Eminem off. Rolling Stones reviewed both Eminem's Revival and Kamikaze. They gave the more publicly accepted album Kamikaze a 2.5 star out of 5 rating, and the rather disputed album Revival a 3.5 star out of 5 rating, which to me automatically shows how out of touch with the general public that the Rolling Stones truly are, but Eminem makes this comparison to Rolling Stones giving his favorite rapper, LL Cool J, the exact same 2.5 star rating out of 5 on Bigger and Deffer, or the Bad album in which Eminem referenced earlier, which Eminem considers a timeless classic album. Basically, all this means that Eminem is saying his favorite rapper got a 2.5 out of 5 stars, then it's definitely going to happen to him, and it pretty much just dissolves Rolling Stone's credibility. This line is in reference to Tom Brady, the former quarterback for the New England Patriots. Yes, former. He's a free agent. Suck my dick. But many people consider Tom Brady the greatest quarterback of all time, who also receives more hate than any player I have ever seen. There's such an undeniable amount of greatness to Tom Brady and his accomplishments, but he is a very easy person to dislike because of those accomplishments, and Eminem is feeling that exact same comparison to the rap game. The previous line referring to James is referencing LL Cool J, who Eminem spent the last few lines talking about, but I also feel like this could be referencing NBA player LeBron James, who is also compared very similarly to basketball as Tom Brady is to football and as Eminem is to rap. There's a few things to unpack with this one, I like it. This is one of my favorite things to do when I make a song. Spell something while rapping while people don't even know that you're spelling something. Now, this one is a little bit of a stretch because you have to stanza it out correctly, but Eminem literally spells the word GOAT, which stands for greatest of all time, and the following lines begin with the next letter in succession to spell the word GOAT again using rap lines only. Like I said, it is a bit of a stretch because you have to format it correctly, but it definitely looks like it was intentional. Also, the rhyme scheme in this one little section specifically is nuts. There's not a single syllable that doesn't rhyme with something else in the stanza. I don't have the time to colorfully label it like I want to right now, but I plan to at some point in the future, and I'm sure this isn't the only part of the song that does this, I just actually audibly caught this when making this video. I feel like this is one of the best back and forth lines of this entire album, and I'm definitely gonna have to give this more than one point. But Eminem is practically saying that no matter what he does, he can't get it right. Before Revival, people said Eminem was amazing at rapping, but that he wasn't really saying anything. I specifically remember Joe Budden on his podcast pointing out that M was one of the greatest rhymers, but he wasn't saying anything, which is why he wasn't one of the best rappers alive. 
Then when Eminem put out Revival, which was a lot of Eminem rapping his beliefs on politics and life in general, it was received horribly and he was swamped with comments of people wanting the old Slim Shady back. But then when he actually brought back the feeling of Slim Shady on Kamikaze, everyone called him bitter and angry. Eminem also experienced the pull of people hating his sound on trap style beats like Tay Keith produces and then wanting him back on some Dre sounding beats. And he also experienced the inverse of this of people tired of him being on Dre beats and wanting him on more Tay Keith sounding beats. It's literally a perfect representation of people pulling him in both directions, neither one of them being the correct direction. I'm gonna give it five wins. He also ends this in a slick double entendre by saying he has more hooks in him than Sway Lee, who is a member of Race Women, who is known to sing the majority of the hooks for the rap duo. Also, I learned while doing research for this that Race Rimmerd is ear drummers backwards, and I know it's unrelated, but I'm gonna count this as a personal win. Eminem has a tattoo of his daughter Haley on his right bicep, so if he lifts enough to where her face stretches, it means that he is simply getting stronger and his biceps are getting bigger. This is another solid example of Eminem constantly experiencing the back and forth of the rap game and the people that respond to it. Basically, no matter what he does, it's wrong. Here, Eminem ties back to earlier when he mentioned Tech 9 Jay-Z, and 2 Chains by assuring that there was no disrespect whatsoever, but he just wanted to show that instead of being credited for rapping as long as they have with such skill, they always get told that they'll never be as good as they once were. And then Eminem follows it up with the best line of the entire song, Bitch, if I was half as good as I was, I'm still twice as good as you'll ever be, which deserved 10 wins. Here we have a nice slick triple entendre. Obviously, the letter V comes after U, and Eminem says that the only way that you are ahead of him is alphabetically, so, you know, U and V and all that stuff. But he also says he's coming after you like the letter V, as in coming for your throat, or coming after you with malicious intent. Um, this can also mean that the V, or victory, comes after you, so Eminem is saying after he comes after you, he will always have the V, or victory. That last one is a little bit of a stretch, but hey, sue me. But this is not near as much of a stretch that the people over on Genius try to make this shit. Like, they try to tie it to V for Vendetta and like Ultraviolet and shit. This is why I don't use Genius as research, okay? Literally anybody can type this shit in. Don't use Genius for research. Only use it to know what the lyrics are. That officially concludes part one of everything great about music to be murdered by. I plan to try to do the entire album if you guys want. Please make sure to drop a like and share this video. Comment if you guys enjoy this, if you found out something new. Never use Genius as research, okay? Always do your own research because anybody can go to Genius and make up some bullshit and put it on there. Now there's a lot of songs on this album. But damn it, we're stuck in a coronavirus quarantine and I'm gonna do every fucking one of them if you guys want it. But just a couple last minute things, I do have some leftover hoodies in stock. I was going to take these on tour with me in April, but that got postponed to July, I think. And by the time it's July, I'm not gonna take hoodies with me. So uh, there's about 100 hoodies left in store if you guys wanna go check them out. I got red, green, and blue ones, and it's the last time they're gonna be ordered. So it's a first come, first serve sort of thing. Also, I'm dropping an EP with Joey Notto on March 27th or April 1st, one of the two days. Don't know yet. We're gonna figure it out. Distribution. But that's the end of this video guys and until next video it has been your boy crit part 2 coming soon